लेट एस नाउ सी अ वेरी नाइस एंड यूजफुल थियोरम द नेम ऑफ द थियोरम इज कैली हैमिल्टन थियोरम सो वॉट डज दिस थियोरम से इज इज वेरी वेरी इजी स्टेटमेंट एंड वेरी नाइस ऑल्सो सो द थियोरम से इज दैट एवरी स्क्वायर मैट्रिक्स सेटिस्फाई इट्स ओन करेस्टिक इक्वेशन सो लेट जस्ट सी दैट वॉट डज दिस मीन सो सपोज यू हैव एनी करेक्टरिस्टिक इक्वेशन विच इज लेट सपोज आई एम राइटिंग विथ रो लेमडा इक्वल टू लेमडा स्क्वायर माइनस लेमडा प्लस वन एनीथिंग ओके सो सपोज यू आर यू आर राइटिंग एनी करेक्टरिस्टिक इक्वेशन सो अल्टीमेटली लाइक वी मेक इट जीरो now this theorem is saying that if you have a matrix uh, like uh, obviously the, this equation will be corresponding to some matrix a minus lambda i then that matrix also satisfy this equation which means that it is also true that a square minus uh, this uh, like instead of lambda just replace with a and whatever is the constant just multiply the constant with let's suppose the constant is 5 then multiply this constant with identity matrix so which means that plus 5i is also zero that's that's what this uh, theorem says so this theorem is very very easy it is saying that if you have any characteristic equation then that characteristic equation is also satisfied by its own matrix okay so every square matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation so for example uh, like before the example one thing is that that uh, we will be using this theorem to find the positive integral power of a which means like to find a power 5 a power 6 like that okay i mean i will show you that how we can find it and also you can find out a inverse using this particular theorem so i will show you that how, how to use this theorem in using the questions so let's just see one example here suppose you have one matrix a and then you write uh, a minus lambda or lambda minus a does not matter because ultimately that is zero determinant of that is zero so you write it and then finally you get this as characteristic equation now you say that your matrix is also satisfying the same characteristic equation which means instead of lambda just replace with a so which means if rho lambda uh, rho lambda is basically something which is lambda square minus 5 lambda minus 2 then instead of lambda just replace with a so rho a will be a square minus 5a minus 2i so rho uh, a square minus 5a minus 2i it should also be zero so you can also verify it okay you can verify this result by the computation you just calculate a square given this a you just calculate uh, you just calculate this 5a and then uh, this is 2i and then ultimately this will be just zero so this is how you can apply the theorem let's just see the questions so this is first question uh, here we are saying that suppose that characteristic polynomial ft or f lambda is t power 4 minus 1 or maybe lambda power 4 minus 1 use this cs theorem so instead of kelly hamilton i will be calling it ch okay so use this cs theorem to express a power 10 plus a power 8 as linear combination of i a a square a cube so let's just solve this question so they are saying that t power 4 minus 1 is actually 0 which means that a power 4 minus i will also be 0 which means that a power 4 is same as i and now they want this a power 10 plus a power 8 to represent uh, i mean they, they they wanted to represent something like that right so what you can do you can make a square both side and from here you can say that a power 8 is also i and then you can multiply a square both side then you can say a power 10 is a square so a power 10 is a square and a power 8 is i so that's how you can represent this particular as a square i and uh, like you don't need a cube but yeah a square and i so a square plus i very very easy question right so that much easily you can solve this question i hope you understood this now let's just solve more questions probably you will get more idea yeah so a square plus i is the final answer so just do one thing just solve these questions with me okay so there are five six questions that i have just solve these questions with me and uh, by the end of this lecture you will be uh, very much comfortable with kelly hamilton theorem so let's just solve this question okay so you pause the video and then solve this question so what they are saying that uh, this is some equation that is given to us and then they are saying that okay uh, using this equation can you find out which of the relation is true so let's just try doing this question so you can say that b square minus 3b is also zero which means you can say b square equal to 3b right now can you calculate b cube just to just to see that okay what is bn okay see b square is this if you calculate b cube then you can say that b cube in terms of b you need to calculate but yeah uh, just multiply b both sides it will be 3b square and b square is just 3b so i think this is 3 square b square right 
sorry three square b because b square is just 3b i hope you understood see what i'm doing i'm multiplying b both side and then i got this equation now from here i'm replacing this b square why i'm replacing because answer is in terms of b see everywhere like either this is b or b power 90 or something right so everywhere everywhere seems like b so that's why i just want to replace this b by something uh, b square by something so b square in terms of 3b so if you replace this b square by 3b it will be 3 square b so it seems like that b square is 3b b cube is 3 square b now again if you do b power 4 see b square is 3b b power cube is coming out to be 3 square b now let's just do b power 4 by multiplying b both side then you will be having 3 square b square right again you will be having 3 square b square and b square is 3b so again it will be 3 cube b so now you notice one pattern if this is square this is one this is cube this is uh, uh, okay sorry this is also uh, always one because i'm writing in terms of b this is square this is one this is cube this is square this is four this is cube which means that you can you can easily observe the pattern which is that like from here you can say b power n equal to equal to 3 power n minus 1 b right using the pattern you can say b power n is 3 power n minus 1 b by the way like let's suppose if someone asks you to actually prove it i mean uh, you you did it uh, using the pattern but if someone says that okay can you prove it which means that uh, see this is this is by the intuition you can say that uh, i mean i have i have not told you a regress proof that okay uh, this will uh, this will follow entire entirely till for any power n right i mean we just observe for power 2 power 3 power 4 that's fine but what if it is it is not going to follow for power 100 i mean you need to somehow prove it like if i actually talk about proof like forget it is not necessary but what i'm saying is that like if you have to give a regress proof that okay it is actually following uh, for any any power n then what you need to do you can use the induction right you can use the proof of induction where you actually have to know the result like the induction works like that you actually first have to know the result and then you you prove your intuition or you prove your result that okay it actually works so induction is helpful in these kind of cases where you observe a pattern and then if someone says that okay can you can you prove this pattern this pattern is going to follow uh, entirely for any n then you will say okay let me use induction right so anyway like that's not from 100 okay but i just told you that okay we can even prove it cool yeah b power n is 3 power n minus 1 b yeah so that's the answer that we got okay so this is the answer that we got yeah they have also solved using the observation but yeah, ultimately you can prove it using induction. Anyway, this uh, proof techniques we have covered in the fundamental course. Uh, but by the way, this is not required for this particular question. Okay. Now let's just go to the next question. What they are saying is that <coughs> A is given to us. Use the Kelly Hamilton theorem or CS theorem to find A inverse. Okay. Interestingly, first they are. I mean, uh, this is the first question where they are uh, they are asking to find the A inverse. But I told you already, right? Like we will be using this theorem. <coughs> see here we will be using this theorem to find the inverse of i square matrix and to find the powers so uh, let's just see that how we can find the inverse of i square, square matrix using this theorem okay and uh, to find a square so yeah this is a good question where they are asking to find a inverse and a square so just try it out before i try okay so just uh, pause the video and try it out if you let's just see if you can find out the a, a inverse and a square so if you just write the uh, polynomial that will be 4 1 minus lambda I think it will be 3 minus lambda, right? 3 minus lambda into 1 minus lambda. So this is 3 minus lambda into 1 minus lambda equal to 0. And then from here you can say this is minus lambda. This is 3, 3 minus 3 lambda minus lambda plus lambda square equal to 0, which means you can say lambda square minus 4 lambda plus 3 equal to 0. And now from here you can find out from here you can you can actually uh, substitute the value of uh, value i mean you can you can put in the value uh, uh, instead of lambda you can put in a so it will be a square minus 4a plus 3 equal to 0 cool so this is the general equation that we got right now let's just do one thing using this what we want we want to find out a square we want to find out a inverse so let's just see if we can do it right so using this sorry this will be 3i so using this we want to find out a square and a inverse now to find out a inverse you will actually you will always be having something like this see it will be lambda square minus lambda in terms of lambda you will be having and finally you have some constant so to find a inverse you can always take <coughs> you can always take a common you take a common it will be a minus 4i plus 3i equal to 0 right so it will be it will be i mean since it is a constant so you can you can say it is a into 
a into something equal to uh, equal to i should be there actually right and the something will be inverse so a into uh, you can say maybe uh, a minus 4i equal to minus 3i and actually i just want i on the right hand side so minus 3 you can uh, you can divide so a into a minus 4i upon minus 3 equal to i right now can you see inverse from this equation so that's the general pattern that you need to follow to find the inverse you need to uh, you need to take a common i mean a into something should be identity right so you uh, you will be always having a constant so you can uh, make this constant on the right hand side and then you can say this is the inverse so the inverse because it, it, it is inverse because a into a inverse should be identity so that's why this is an inverse so inverse a inverse will be 1 by 3 into 4 i minus a 1 by 3 into 4 i minus a right let's just check the inverse Yeah, 1 by 3 into 4i minus a. This is the inverse, right? Okay. And now you can calculate the inverse, which means you can subtract uh, subtract uh, a from the 4i and then you will be getting the inverse. Isn't it a nice method? So you subtract this. Uh, <coughs> this is basically 4i minus a, right? So 4, 0, 0, 4 minus whatever is the a, you and then finally you divide by 3. So 3, 0, 4, 1. So you subtract it, it will be uh, 1, 0, minus 4, minus 3, and you divide by 3 ultimately, right? It will be minus 1. So that's how you can calculate the A inverse. I hope you understood. Cool. Now, let's just see the next question, which is to find the A square. So A square you can easily see from here, which is 4i, 4a minus 3i, right? 4a minus 3i will be A square. So uh, let's just see the answer. 4a minus 3i will be a square and then uh, earlier it was the uh, a inverse so this is a inverse so okay so that's how easily you can find out a inverse and a uh, and uh, a power so remember in all the questions you will be having the same pattern which means you will be having a square a cube or, or something like that and then and then ultimately you will be having 5i or some constant then what you need to do you need to take that a common and then this will be your a inverse and then write i i in, uh, write in such a way that uh, on the right hand side you just have i and that this will be your a inverse right very easily you can find out the a inverse okay now let's just see if this is true or false let a be 3 by 3 matrix if a has eigenvalue 0 0 0 okay it is 3 by 3 matrix and it has three eigenvalues i mean it will be having three eigenvalues and all are zeros right then they are they are asking that what is uh, then then a cube is zero is this true or false or maybe maybe they can ask the same question in the NAT. They can just ask then then what will the a cube? Okay, and then you need to answer what is the a cube. See, the eigenvalues are zero zero zero, which means the characteristic equation must be this. Which means this is the characteristic equation, isn't it? And this characteristic equation should be satisfied by a, which means which means it is clearly meaning that a cube should also be zero. This, this zero is a matrix, right? I mean, it should be 0 into i basically, a scalar 0 into i, I hope you got it, see, from here, a cube equal to 0 into i, and then 0 into i is just 0 matrix, okay, so this is 0, and uh, yeah, that is true, so you can say this is true, nice question, isn't it? See, uh, using the Kelly hamilton theorem, you you actually have to apply it at the unexpected places. <laughs> that's the that's the problem, and that's the beauty about this algorithm or, or or the theorem that you have to apply this at the unexpected places. So you don't know that whether it will get applied, but yeah, eventually it will get applied. So that's the that's the also case with uh, some other things in the in the computer science like uh, pigeonhole principle. Like uh, you will see you you will when you study pigeonhole principle, then uh, by the statement you will think that okay, this is very easy statement. Actually, this is easy statement, but you have to apply at the unexpected places, right? So that's that's the same thing about this Kelly Hamilton theorem. Okay, so yeah, that is true. Right? Now let's just solve this question. Now in this question they are saying the uh, c uh, the characteristic polynomial of this uh, uh, this matrix is given like that. Use the Kelly Hamilton theorem to find out a and b so that a cube. So th they are actually asking the value of a cube, right? So I think you can do it as in homework or or if you want I can do it also. So a square minus two a plus i is actually zero and then from here you can say a cube minus uh, okay a cube you just multiply by the a a cube minus two a square plus a equal to 0 and from here you can say a cube is 2a square plus 
माइनस ए राइट टू ए स्क्वायर माइनस ए एंड नाउ नाउ यू जस्ट नोटिस वन थिंग विच इज दैट इफ यू इफ यू सी दैट दिस दिस इज द टर्म्स ऑफ ओनली ए एंड आई बट हेयर यू हैव ए स्क्वायर सो वॉट यू नीट टू डू यू नीट टू रिप्लेस दिस ए स्क्वायर राइट ए स्क्वायर इन टर्म्स ऑफ ए सो ए स्क्वायर इज टू ए माइनस आई सो हेयर टू ए माइनस आई यू नीट टू रिप्लेस माइनस ए इट इज फोर ए माइनस ए विल बी थ्री ए माइनस टू आई आई थिंक राइट सो दैट्स हाउ यू कैन फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ ए एंड बी ए इज थ्री बी इज माइनस टू लेट जस्ट सी द आंसर या थ्री ए माइनस टू आई ए इज थ्री बी इज माइनस टू राइट सो ए इज थ्री बी इज माइनस टू ओके नाउ लेट जस्ट सी दिस क्वेश्चन सो दिस इज ऑल्सो वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन आई थिंक द आंसर ऑन द नेक्स्ट पेज सो वॉट यू कैन डू यू कैन जस्ट ट्राइट आउट ट्राई आउट दिस क्वेश्चन एज ए होमवर्क ओके बिकॉज आंसर इज ऑन द नेक्स्ट पेज सो यू कैन जस्ट ट्राइट आउट एज ए होमवर्क ओके सो दैट्स ऑल अबाउट द कैली हेलमेटल थियोरम वेरी वेरी इजी थियोरम बट यू हैव टू नो दैट वेयर यू आर गोइंग टू अप्लाई दिस थियोरम ओके सो समटाइम्स यू विल नेवर नो दैट ओके यू कैन अप्लाई दिस थियोरम बट या इट इज बेटर टू कीप दिस थियोरम ऑन टॉप ऑफ द माइंड right like whenever you see the powers of a then you just uh, need to uh, i mean think about this theorem so whenever you see okay a cube a or or maybe maybe if you see the inverse of a then then maybe maybe at that place also you need to think about this theorem okay so thank you so much uh, that's all about this theorem yeah.